So it's a dosing issue, it's a management issue, and then it's a compliance issue on the patient's part. These peptides actually protect muscle and they protect bone and they play with bone in a way, just kind of the kindergarten version. You've got osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So you've got cells that build bone and you've got cells that break down bone. And as we age, our osteoblasts start to peter out and they kind of go rogue. So they'll start building bone spurs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And then the osteoclasts sort of gain power and they start breaking down your bone. And that's where osteoporosis starts playing you know, a role. And that's where we start seeing the aging of bones. And GLP-1 impacts positively bone homeostasis. It impacts the homeostasis between these osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And that is so freaking cool. <laughs> it is so freaking cool. So it suggests they could play a role in both tissue, bone tissue destruction and renewal. But what we want is balance in there. We want homeostasis. We don't want one side winning, right? We don't want too much bone growth and we don't want too much bone degradation. And then there's positive impacts on adipose tissue and that's adipose tissue throughout your whole body. It actually helps white fat beige, if you will. So kind of returning to a browning, brown fat is the fat we had when we were babies and it helps you be more insulin sensitive and it helps you really just keep your metabolism in check in a positive way. White fat is what we get more of as we age and we fill up our fat cells. That's white fat cells. So that's pretty damn cool. And then it actually has been shown to impact the fat that is in the joints. So you can get fatty infiltration into the joints. You can get fatty infiltration into bones and you can get fatty infiltration into muscle. And that's really unhealthy. When that starts to happen, that is your fat has gone rogue and it is that is not a healthy process. So there is impacts in a positive way from GLP-1s on that whole process and potentially slowing that down or reversing that. And I think that's really very cool too. And then the nerves. Pain is really interesting because pain's happening in your brain. I know we think it's happening in the area that hurts, but it's actually ultimately being signaled from the brain. And so if we can reduce central nervous system inflammation, if we can reduce the hyperactivation and polarization of the microglial cells, they get primed and they get pissy and they're very difficult to revert back. And it's, there's some discussion that GLP ones could actually make the microglial cells happier again, back to their happy form. So there's actually one study GLP one receptor is expressed in microglial cells of the dorsal vertebral horn and overexpressed in models of peripheral neuropathy. That means you're getting a lot of receptors looking for GLP one. Intrathecal injection of exenatide, which is an old, that's like the OG GLP-1, reduced the hypersensitivity by up to 90% in a, this was in a, a rodent study, by up to 90% in a model of peripheral neuropathy without affecting acute nociceptive responses. That means nociceptive responses are your pain responses. We don't want to dull your it's complicated. We don't want to turn off the nociceptive responses because then you don't know that you're hurting yourself, right? You need to know that you're hurting yourself. But to be able to turn it down and calm it down is and turn off that pathologic hypersensitivity, that's money. And this is, I mean, this is just mind blowing 90%, up to 90%. In addition, exenatide caused the release of beta endorphin from the spinal cord. This anti-allodynic effect induced by GLP-1 could be blocked by the opioid receptor antagonist naloxone. So interesting. It's playing on our opioid receptors. It's having an impact further than what we understand. So that basically all, all that fancy jargon means pain relief. And that is a good thing. They looked at, they demonstrated in a rat chronic pain model of spinal nerve ligation. They cut the rat, poor ratties. They cut the rat's spinal nerves and they did an intrathecal injection of exenatide. It reduced pain sensitivity as assessed by certain tests and it decreased neuroinflammation. It reversed or I reduced TNF alpha, um, different interleukins that are pro inflammatory, like interleukin six, and again, showed analgesic effects, which is so dang cool. So this study, this review was not funded by anybody. There was no pharmaceutical company behind it. And therefore we can trust it a little bit more. We know that GLP ones can readily pass through the blood brain barrier. And this probably extends the therapeutic efficacy of GLP one receptor activation, which is basically their conclusion and that there should be more studies done. <laughs>